Hello survivors, it's been a while. I've been working on finishing the new studio and now it's done. And it looked like this, and this, and this. <laughs> I'm sorry I've been keeping you waiting, but I've got some exciting stuff coming up. And no, this channel is not dead. It's alive! <laughs> so let me make this quick and get to the story, because we all know that's what you came here for. Uh, you. But first, big shouts out to our sponsors, Scream Radio, Reillusion Software, Dicey Rileys of Straban, Faith Guitars, and Krodos Audio. And also shouts out to all the Patreons that support the channel. Keeping me going strong. <laughs> oh, shit's getting too crazy. And one big final shout out to my co-producer, The Disciple. He's an up-and-coming audio animator. You've probably heard him in the Rainy Day Survivors as Gabriel, or he did the African accent as well. That's racist. No, it's not. Shut up. It is. Shut up. You're racist. <gasps> Links to everything are in the description down below, and stick around after the video to see an original music video by my buddy, Irish singer-songwriter, Matthew Crampsey. This guy's going places. I love this guy. I love his voice. I love his talent, so stick around. Send him some love over on his Instagram, on his Facebook, and all the links you'll find in the description down below. Now, finally! <laughs> what kind of voice was that? This is an original story called Late Bus, and all the voices in this story were played by me. Now... Grab your headphones, turn off the lights, seduce two puppies into licking your face at the same time via peanut butter just because their breath smells good. And finally, survive. <clears throat> no, but seriously, put the headphones on because I make this stuff with 3D audio, which means it's left and right. And if you listen to it on a phone, that's mono. It's like one channel. It's not as good. There's no movement. There's no bass. You know, you don't get the booms that I put in there and all the and all the rah and all that kind of stuff. So if you're going to listen to it, listen to it right and put on the fucking headphones. God damn it, man. Lazy fucking cunt. Please don't unsub from me. <laughs> My car was out of action at the time, so I decided to walk home after my shift at the straightway 24-hour diner. Being a male waitress means people are less sympathetic towards you, unless you happen to be cute. But I'm not. Instead, I eat a lot. I guess I like food better than I like people. When I clocked out, I asked around to see if anyone would give me a ride home. I thought maybe someone could take a break and help me out. I mean, it was freezing outside. But I guess if you don't look hungry, you don't look cold. So I said, fuck it. It was only four miles. I figured it'd be good exercise. I could walk off half of that Snickers bar I was planning to munch in my bed when I got home. Obviously, I didn't want to hike home at 2 a.m. in the cold and on foot initially, but I talked myself into it. And it seemed like a healthy idea until I walked out the front door of the diner. The razor-sharp, sub-zero wind felt as if it was cutting fine slits into my face. My hands were leathery ice as I struggled to breathe the frostbitten air comfortably. I sped up the pace for a while to keep myself warm, but it didn't help. It was just too damn cold. The straight, dark road surrounded on both sides by forest just seemed to grow longer and longer as it stretched deep into the never-ending black darkness ahead of my feet. I paused to look back at the diner. It was so far away that I couldn't even read the letters on the huge neon sign in the parking lot, nor could I make out anyone or anything inside through the windows. I'd never seen it like that, from so far away, for so long three miles of one straight flat road. You can see the whole way during the day, fog permitting. The straightway diner sits on the right side of the road just before a sharp curve at the end of the straight. It's a dangerous ass place to drive out of. It'd be easy to get clipped by another driver that turns the curve in anticipation of speeding down the straight. But I had nothing to worry about. I was on opposite ends of the road at that stage, so. I was safe. I rubbed my eyes with my fingers. I couldn't feel anything. My sense of touch was numb due to the cold, and I was so tired that I started walking with my eyes closed. I don't know, 
I kind of felt like it was helping. Kind of like when you catch someone falling asleep in public and they tell you they're just resting their eyes. I was using the same excuse as I pushed forward, further and further away from the diner. With one foot on the road and one on the grass, I blindly shivered my way in the direction of where I thought home was. The wind was howling like a mad dog and the chill had set in my bones at that stage. My teeth chattered together uncontrollably as I forced myself to move faster. After God knows how long, I stopped, turned back, and opened my eyes to gauge how far I'd walked, but the straightway diner was no longer visible. I mean, I'd never had to walk home before, but it's supposed to be visible for the full three mile stretch, unless the power was out or the diner had closed for some reason. Either way, I'd have been shocked if the doors were locked. The straightway is and always has been 24 seven. Apart from being on the straightest and flattest road in the state, it's also known for having never closed a single day in its 60 years of business. So I should definitely have seen it in the distance, even as a small, star-sized dot of light. But the road behind me was pale dark. I started to think I'd taken a wrong turn or something while I was eye resting. When I finally turned back around, I was shocked by two things. For a start, I was no longer standing on asphalt. Below my feet was nothing but a dirty old gravel road that I must have been traveling on for some time because I could see no pavement within a close proximity of me. I had definitely been walking on a smooth, flat surface up until that point. And no, I wasn't asleep. I was resting my eyes, remember? The second thing that caught me off guard was the sight of an old wooden bus stop bench. There was a 70-something-year-old woman sitting on one side of it. She was wearing a faded, thin, beige corduroy jacket with no gloves, no scarf, no hat and nothing else to warm herself up properly. But she didn't seem cold in the slightest. She was sitting happily, legs crossed, while humming a tune I didn't recognize, but for some strange reason, it warmed me up on the inside, as if it made me feel the presence of actual heat. I took a step closer to her, still trying to make sense of my surroundings. The old woman kept her head down and continued to hum carelessly. When I got close to her, I asked her if she knew when the next bus ran. She stopped humming and said nothing for several moments. I started to think that maybe she had a screw or two loose when she finally answered in a pleasant elderly voice. The late bus will be here soon. I was still disoriented and unaware of how I got where I was or even where I was exactly, but the hope of a warm bus to get me home or at very least near home, relieved me. I asked the old woman where the bus was headed. It will take you where you're going. <laughs> she said with a soft chuckle. Right, uh, well, uh, do you know how much, how much a ticket is? I questioned. Why, the journey is free. Oh, oh great, because uh, cause I'm kind of broke at the minute, I said. Oh, don't worry, child. Have a seat next to me and warm yourself up. Sure, okay. The driver will stamp your hand when you're bored. She said politely. I sat down on the bench next to the grandmotherly old woman who continuously hummed while we waited for the late bus to arrive. I began thinking to myself as I sat there. What was a 70 to 80 year old woman doing sitting in a freezing bus stop at 3 a.m.? On top of that, I'd never heard of a late bus service around here. I knew of no public transport that ran into the AMs on this side of the state. It was puzzling, but needs must, and I needed warmth. Out of nowhere, the old woman sharply stood up and said through a smile in a low, crumbling voice, It's coming. I looked all around in anticipation, but I couldn't see or hear anything that resembled a bus. I turned my head back in the direction I came from and was about to ask the woman if she was sure we hadn't missed the bus when 
Another male voice caught me off guard. Will you be joining us for this journey, or are you waiting on another ride? I spun back around towards the voice and realized it was coming from the inside of an old, vintage, public bus. The voice was the driver's. He sat in the driver's seat, staring straight ahead as he motioned for me to step forward into the dim-lit interior of the bus. I stood up and moved forward, still so confused. I started to get cold again. I shivered as I told the driver. Um, yeah, yeah, I guess I, guess I am. Uh, uh, listen, uh, I, I was walking home from work and uh, ooh, I, I kind of got lost and I'm just, I'm just, uh, it's really cold. Can, can you? He cut me off. I'll get you where you need to go, but you gotta hurry up. I'm on a tight schedule and you kind of wasted my time. At that moment, I realized that the old woman was gone. Uh, hey, uh, there was an old woman that was- He interrupted me again. The old woman's already on the bus, stamped in all. Now let's go! I'm already late, and I still gotta stamp your hand. I couldn't figure out how I missed the old woman boarding or the stealthy arrival of the bus, but I stepped forward and held out my hand to be stamped. I couldn't understand the need for a stamp as the bus was free, but I didn't want to question anything for the sake of a little warmth and a free lift home. As the driver stamped my hand, I told him where I lived and asked him to drop me wherever was closest. He simply lifted his hand and pointed towards the back of the bus without any eye contact whatsoever. I headed to the seating section still shivering, and sure enough the old woman was sitting up front just behind the driver's seat, still humming to herself. The bus was exceptionally warm for a bus of its age and quite full for a late service especially one I'd never heard of. There was only one empty seat at the very back of the bus, so I headed towards it. As I passed the other people on the bus, I realized that it wasn't carrying the typical post-midnight passengers that I'd expect to see at 3 a.m. Filling the old cloth seats on the bus were what looked like businessmen, workers, and a couple families with kids. It was strange. I mean, who brings children on a late bus service? Is that even legal on a school night? I don't know. I just couldn't make heads or tails of the situation. Everyone on the old rickety bus was silent except for the old woman who continuously hummed softly. I still found her warm and pleasant until I realized that every single passenger I passed was staring directly at her seat with a horrified expression plastered on their shadow grazed faces. It was as if they were scared of her, but the old woman seemed completely unaware that that kind of attention was being directed at her. On top of that, none of the other passengers had even acknowledged my presence. I also noticed that the bus heavily smelled like smoke and ash. The staunch stench was so strong that it stung my septum. I put it out of my mind best I could. As I continued towards the last empty seat, I began to wonder if there had been an altercation before I got on the bus. I stopped in front of one of the seats and asked a man who looked like a 70s dad if everything was okay, but I only got two words out before the driver interrupted me. This bus can't leave till you sit down in your seat. Now find a seat and sit down in it. The level of hot rage in his voice caused me to whip around in the aisle to face the front of the bus. The driver had turned around in his seat and was glaring into my eyes. His face was twisted in hatred. He bared his teeth with bulging eyes and his head shook with anger. He showed so much violent emotion, yet he remained unnaturally silent after his outburst. The old woman stopped humming but continued to face forward. My confusion level peaked when I saw that every passenger on the bus was staring at me with a look of stewed wrath. As I slowly walked to the back of the bus, their eyes followed me as I approached my seat. It felt so awkward. I looked back at the driver and the other passengers. I'm... Uh, I'm sorry for holding everyone up. I muttered. All the other people on board the late bus quickly snapped their heads back around to the front. I sat down embarrassed as the dark bus drove away from the stop. I stared out the window and watched the woods pass by as I wondered where we were. I thought my house couldn't have been too far away, but I found nothing familiar about my surroundings. 
I wondered if we were even heading in the right direction. After 10 or 15 minutes, I grew anxious so I decided to ask the driver how close we were to my stop. I shouted my question up the aisle but it was met with silence. I waited for a few minutes and spoke up again, louder this time. No response. I asked the woman in front of me where the final bus stop was. She slowly turned her head and whispered, Get off the bus! I sunk back in my seat. Something wasn't right about this late bus. I was about to stand up and go ask the driver where the hell we were going when I noticed that the old woman at the front was gone and every passenger was staring back at me with a look of disdain. At this point I wanted the bus to stop and just let me off. I didn't really care where. I kept looking out the window in hopes of a familiar area but I knew that we'd been driving for way too long. There was nothing but trees and blackness. Suddenly I spotted a light in the distance. I wasn't sure what it was but I was definitely getting off at whatever structure those lights were stationed at because this was all way too fucking weird for my taste. I didn't know where these people were from but it was pretty clear that they didn't like me. Plus the smell of smoke seemed to be getting stronger. It was choking the back of my throat. Suddenly the bus driver started to giggle uncontrollably for no reason. I had totally had enough weird shit for one night. Hey, driver, can you let me off at the, at the lights? That, that's my stop. I shouted loudly from the back of the bus. The driver just continued to giggle as he slowly stopped the bus in the middle of the road. He then turned around and began to stare at me like the other passengers were doing. None of them even blinked. My voice cracked as I said, No, I meant, can you let me off, like, further on up, like, closer to the lights? Hello? The second I finished my sentence, the passengers began to giggle softly along with the driver. Hey, what the fuck is going on here? Why have we stopped? And why is everyone giggling? I screamed, starting to panic. This isn't funny! And that's when I heard the old woman's humming. But she still wasn't in her seat. She sounded closer. Too close. I looked to my left and was startled to find her sitting right beside me. Hey, whoa! Fuck! What the fuck, man? The giggling stopped, but everyone continued to stare at me. We're almost there. The old woman whispered, smiling through her aged, cracked brown teeth. I was so caught off guard that I nearly jumped through the window on my right. The old woman put her hand on my lap and silently pulled out a small rusty hatchet just before she slid down into the darkness below the seat she was sitting in. Hey, hey she's got a... she's a... she's got a... fuck! I said, rising to my feet and jumping up to stand on top of my seat. Everyone started laughing like they were going insane. I didn't know what to do. I was in complete shock. A second or two later, an aging arm wielding the hatchet rose up behind the heads of the male and female passengers in front of me. And without warning, it came crashing down into their backs repeatedly. The victims laughed even harder as blood shot out of their mouths and peppered my face with each cackle. I watched the bloody hatchet bounce from one side to the other, delivering a crushing blow to each of the two laughing people in turns back and forward until they were no longer making any sounds. Their lifeless bodies continued to grin as they lay bleeding in their seats. It all happened so fast. I couldn't believe my fucking eyes, and my body wouldn't move. My knees shook with fear as the whole bus began laughing again. The old woman rose up from the dark floor in the aisle next to the couple that she'd just slaughtered, raised her hatchet high in the air, and jumped on the guy in the next seat thrashing him over and over as the mass giggling turned into a full-on bus full of hysterical laughter. My body finally kicked back into gear and I ran up the aisle of the bus, but I didn't get far easily. The crazy passengers began to reach out and grab for me as I passed their seats. I had to fight like hell to get away from them. They were so strong. During the struggle, I looked back at the old woman a few times and she was butchering everyone. 
one by one, getting closer and closer as I swatted at the hands reaching out for me. I kicked and punched and shoved to tear myself away from the crazy people, and I was almost out of the bus when a hand got a good grip on me. It was the driver. Let me off the bus, man. Get your, hey. get your fucking hands Did off I me. Did I tell you? Fuck! Let, let go Sit out of your seat. He roared in between crazy fits of laughter. His skin appeared to be melting. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. With a final burst of strength, I got out of the driver's grasp and fell out of the door, landing hard on my back on the cold asphalt. Let me go! You fucking, you fucking psycho! Come back! Come back! Oh! Ah! We do this all the time! Go fuck yourself! Wall of blood! The bus doors closed and the bus started up. As it drove away, a huge flame engulfed the entire bus. I could hear horrific muffled screams coming from inside the vehicle until it was no longer in sight. I laid on the ground for several minutes. I couldn't breathe. I was having a panic attack. I just couldn't process anything. And I still can't. Who could? A few minutes later, I heard a massive metal smack in the distance and something that sounded like an explosion. I jumped up to my feet, wondering what else could possibly happen to me that night. And that's when it dawned on me that the bus must have crashed. I ran as fast as I could towards the lights in the distance. As I neared the lit up structure, I realized what it was. It, it was, it was where I work. The straightway 24 hour diner. I was back. But how the hell was that even possible? It couldn't have been. Physically and emotionally drained, I bursted through the diner's double doors and shouted for my co-workers to call the police as I collapsed and slid down the back side of the door. I began to cry uncontrollably due to confusion and relief. And from there I blacked in and out of consciousness. I remember everyone being around me, asking me questions, bringing me glass of water after glass of water, covering me with blankets, and even giving me heated gloves. But all I could say over and over was, she, 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 she killed them uh, uh, on the bus. I noticed in the diner's bar mirror that the blood that had been laughed up in my face on the bus was mysteriously gone. Then my manager dropped a bombshell. He told me that they had been worried about me because I hadn't shown up for work in two days. But I told him that that was bullshit. I'd just left work an hour or two ago. I still had on my uniform. But he assured me that he was right when he showed me the date on a newspaper. No one had seen me for two days. Where was I for 48 hours? I had no answers for my absence. When the police finally came, I was still shocked out, but I had calmed down quite a bit after coming to terms with the fact that, at that point, I was safe. As safe as I could be, anyway. I told the two officers my story and asked them to check the road past the curve because I thought I heard what sounded like a crash in that direction. But what the older officer told me chilled my spine. The color drained from my face in disbelief as I listened to him speak. Sitting in a booth across from me, he told me that there was no crash, at least not tonight, and not in the two nights prior either. But there was one almost 50 years ago in the early 70s. It happened just at the curve past the diner in February of 72. And lo and behold, it was a bus crash. Apparently an old bus went off the road and crashed into the trees. No one ever knew the exact cause of the crash. The bus caught fire due to a gas explosion and that sent the forest up in flames. Every single person inside the bus was burned alive. It took firemen two full days to control the flames. Local county buses used to have a policy that if the bus was ever late by over 30 minutes, the journey was free to all passengers on board for that round of travel. But obviously, that meant someone was getting fired. It was theorized that the driver was speeding because he was late due to having to make an unprecedented stop 
to pick up an old woman that lived in the woods off a gravel road near an old forgotten bus stop. Apparently, the bus stop no longer exists. While no foul play was ever investigated relating to the incident, there was one small detail that no one but the investigators knew about. They said the fire was so bad that the only material that survived the heat was the metal, bone fragments of the passengers and a small old dull hatchet. No one ever figured out who it belonged to. I don't know who believed me and who thought I was crazy or what, but regardless, that was all the facts I ever got on the matter. The old cop told me it sounded like I may have experienced what locals to the straight like to call an echo. It's kinda like a ghost memory. He said if I believe in that sort of thing, I should look it up. Other than that, there was no case. The officers gave me a lift to my house. I racked my brain as I sat alone in my home, trying to make sense of things. I was so exhausted, but still too tired to sleep. My patchy memory raced as I attempted to retrace the events that apparently took place over two days, not a couple of hours. I started to wonder if any of that madness actually even happened. I thought maybe I was going crazy or perhaps I'd blacked out or something, but it was no use. I couldn't think and I couldn't stop thinking. I put my head in my hands realizing that I was still wearing the gloves I was given at the diner. I was only beginning to feel comfortably warm again. I was lucky I didn't die of hypothermia. I pulled off the gloves and tossed them aside. And that's when I saw it. It read, Straightway Bus Service, Route 44, February 29th, 1972. Delayed. It was the bus stamp. The ink was blood red. We are coming for you. She can't sleep without the TV on And I can't sleep until the TV's off So every night to keep the peace I'll wait until she falls asleep And I turn the TV off She don't need a breakfast in the morning she won't eat till like two or three But when I wake up and I walk into the kitchen She's made breakfast just for me You see, that's how I know And how we show we both care Wherever I I want her to be there We could live in a house Or we could travel and roam As long as I have her then I am home She likes watching movies in the evening Especially when she can't believe I haven't seen But when it's quiet I can hear it in her breathing The movie's on but she's fast asleep And she's not much into country music She'd much prefer if it was R&B when it's on she sings along now Broken Halo is her favorite song And that's something that I never thought I'd see You see, that's how I know And how we show we both care Wherever I go I want her to be We could travel and roam As long as I have her, then I am home
long as I have her, then I am home. Cause I'd be lost without you. I can't face the world alone. I'm so glad I found you. Let's find a place to call our own. As long as I have her, then I am home. We are coming for you. We are coming for you. We are coming for you. We are coming. We are coming. We are coming for you.